everybody, my name is Katie Bayline, and this episode of Outside Every Day with Soriel is brought to you by Logos Public Charter School's Community Garden Program, helping you connect and learn with nature every day. So today, we are going to help you capture the colors of your garden. We're going to take a step away from some more science lessons and focus on some art and observation today. So this activity can be done in any space where you have plants growing, indoors, outdoors on your deck, or in a garden space. This lesson is inspired by the Oregon Agriculture in the Classroom's calendar contest. The entry deadline is coming up on May 6th, so it's a good time to test out your creativity and celebrate gardens, growing food, pollinators, and all the delicious food items that Oregon is known for. So the materials that you will need for this activity are very flexible, but each person will need about two pieces of standard sized paper. Today, we're using watercolor paper because we're using watercolor as our medium. You'll need some sort of paint, colored pencils, watercolor, some sort of color for you to create your piece. Um, a pencil to do a rough draft, a sharpie or pen if you want to do use um, for your final copy. Cardboard or a clipboard for a hard surface while you are outside. And I have a book, um, Keeping a Nature Journal which I have attached a page about color so that you might um, look into that as well. today as artists is for you to survey your garden. How many different colors can you find in your garden? Can you find every single color in the rainbow? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet? What's the most colorful area you can find? I would love to see all the pictures that you have of your colorful gardens, so send them on over to us. After a quick survey, Emily and I determined that this is the most colorful area of our garden, the pollinator garden. There are so many different kinds of flowers here. Can you spot every color in the rainbow just by looking? So our next activity, you're going to be placing yourself in this most colorful space. We're going to test out our observation skills to create the colors you'll be using for your drawing. All right, grab one of your two pieces of paper and label it with the location that you've chosen. Look closely at your chosen area and try to match your art medium to the colors in front of you. How close can you get? Create a color code for yourself. So I'm gonna start with this yellow flower. And I see that the middle part is this bright, vivid yellow, and the tips are more of a creamy white. So I'm gonna to try to create that on my palette. I'm gonna start out by coloring with my yellow. And then I'm gonna try to mix in a little bit of orange and see if that works. I've chosen to use watercolor pencils so I can work on slowly mixing until I find just the right combination of colors. it matches my flower pretty well. All right. So then you can go from there to find all the right color for all of your beautiful plants in your garden. My finished palette you can see that I've captured that indigo dark indigo of the lupin flower the bright green of a clover leaf the bright orange of the poppy kind of the uh, pinkish and reddish colors of both different kinds of clover that I have in this garden so I hope that you had fun making your palette and now it's time to create your piece now that you really know how your colors work 
You'll have to decide what you want to be the center or focus of your drawing, how zoomed in you want to be, what the background will look like, etc. And make sure you use your creativity and your own style. So to get you in the spirit of style, I wanted to show you some examples of other famous artists' drawings of their gardens. This is a piece by Vincent Van Gogh of some irises. This is the famous Claude Monet. This is a picture done by Pablo Picasso. And if you'd like to include some people in your drawing, do not hesitate to do that. This is an image of a, of a garden done by Renoir. And you can see it even more different style by the German artist Kurt Hermann. So have fun with your garden drawings and send us your photos when you're done with it. Oregon clover honey inspired by a little clover right here in front of me and Emily drew a beautiful uh, broad shot of the entire pollinator garden so whatever you want to do go with it um, also make sure to either send us your um, artwork or send it to the Oregon agriculture in the classroom calendar competition I'll link the information here on this video um, your entries are due by May 6th and I'm also linking a page from one of my favorite books, Keeping a Nature Journal by Claire Walker Leslie. She has some really interesting thoughts on using color with different mediums and experimenting with shading, layering, and erasing. And most importantly, make sure that you have fun with this project. So stay tuned for tomorrow's Outside Everyday post about snag habitats and send us your art so that we can post it on our Logos channels. And of course, if you like this video, share it with people that you know to get them doing art in the garden. Have a good day.